this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and today I'm going to show you how to bind a quilt from start to finish with the grand finale using this cute little number 71 flat fell seam foot or lap seam foot. Of course, you know, I never use anything for what it's supposed to be used for. Uh, we're going to do a two and a half inch binding. Uh, we're going to do it on the grain, not on the bias, but you're going to learn a lot. So pay attention. Let's get started. I'm going to use a Bernina 880 today to make this binding. And the first thing that you just need to be mindful of is cut two and a half inch strips. Now I'm not using bias for this binding. I could certainly use bias, but I'm not today. So this is width of the fabric, two and a half inches. I have, uh, for this quilt that I'm using, I have about six strips that are cut that way and I need to join my six strips together first. And I'm doing that on my Bernina 880 plus with a 97D patchwork foot. I'm taking one of my pieces for my strips and I have it right side up. And then I'm going to piece this with a miter junction. And so when these are getting joined, I'm gonna line this up together like this and I'm gonna sew from corner to corner. If you want, you can take a um, heat vanishing pen and draw a line using your straight edge. So just lining this up corner to corner on a 45 degree line. You can see here as I'm using my ruler that this is my 45 degree line on this ruler and it's lined up or I take my 45 degree angle this way and line it up. But I'm just gonna use my, my pen to draw. Now, I'm going to admit to you, I do not do this <laughs> when I'm sewing, but if you're a beginner at this, you definitely want to use this trick. I'm going to put it under my foot and drop my presser foot. All right, I'm lining up my, my foot and my needle. I'm going to sew right on that line that we made. And now just repeat this until you have all of your pieces connected. All right, once you have your pieces sewn together, you're just gonna trim them. And I like using these Karen K. Buckley scissors because not only are they the perfect blade length, but they're serrated and they will kind of hold the material in place for me as I make the cut. So I'm just gonna cut these like this. And then I call these little puppy ears and I'm gonna trim those as well. So we're just gonna go through and trim all of our pieces just like this. Then we're gonna press our seams open with our Laura Star iron. When you're doing your quilt, now this is the quilt that we're gonna bind. This is the top part of the quilt. I actually am gonna show you a technique using the Bernina 71 foot. And that technique requires that we actually sew the binding onto the wrong side of the quilt. We're gonna leave a little tail of binding so that we can join it at the end. So I'm gonna line this up here and I'm gonna use some clips to hold this into place. But I'm not gonna start sewing this on until right about here. All right, that's how I get started. And so I'll meet you back at the machine. Can I take a minute to talk about the number 71 foot? The 71 foot is originally used to do a lap seam or a faux flat fell seam. Uh, that's something that you see maybe on the inside seams of your jeans and things like that. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using this piece, we're gonna use this foot to sew the binding onto the back side of the quilt, but then when we bring it around, we're gonna use this area here that kind of holds the folded over edge into place so we can sew it nicely. Now I'm gonna start off with my 
needle position in the center position. I'm using a Bernina 880 machine, so with that in mind, it really wants me to tell it what foot I'm using. So I have selected 71 out of my repertoire for the machine. And if, for those of you that have already sewn on bindings before, this binding is gonna be no different. It's gonna be stitched, we're gonna miter our corners, and we're gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna show you this process from start to finish, but just wanted to talk through a couple of these things. Okay, I talked to you when I was putting the binding on that we need a little tail like this to get started, and we're not gonna stitch to that yet. We're just going to line this up, and there is a little trick to how I line this up. So I'm gonna use the side of my foot. So let's get that clip out of the way. And so the material is right up to the edge of our foot. Both the raw edge of the binding material and the raw edge of the quilt. And I get started by sewing a few stitches, using my quick reverse and going backwards. And I'm also using needle down engaged because that way it can kind of hold my place as I wiggle things around to get around this quilt. Now I'm coming up on my first corner. And I'm gonna stop about the same as my seam allowance. I stopped right at the beginning of the quilt. Now I'm gonna go backwards and cut. Now to miter, I'm going to turn my quilt around and I'm gonna pull my material up like this so that as I pull this up, I'm making a nice straight edge and then I'm gonna bring that back down on itself. Just like that. And you know, some of you, if you need, you can use a little clip to hold things in place as you get it under the machine. But now I'm gonna lower my presser foot and start stitching again. And now I'm gonna go all the way down to the other edge and do the miter again. All right, I'm getting ready to get to the corner again. So a couple more stitches and then I can backtrack, cut. And now I'm gonna turn it around again and do our little miter. So that means that the fabric goes up like this, comes back down. I'm gonna hold it into place. Now, some of you are gonna ask, hey Gail, I see two rows of stitching right there. Yeah, I kind of like saw a squirrel and it moved, so I just overstitched a little bit there. But you know, that's gonna happen to you too, don't worry about it. All right, so now I've got my miter folded again. I'm gonna start lowering my presser foot down. And guess what? I just do this until I get to the next corner. Okay, I'm at corner number three. Back tacking, stopping, and cutting to do the miter. Bring it down. and stitch.
don't forget to line that material up right up to the edge of your foot too. It's easy for this to slide, especially when your quilt is heavy. And this quilt batting that I have in here is a bamboo batting, which is kind of light, but my material is kind of heavy because I'm using spoon flower fabric on the back. And the spoon flower fabric I think is super cute because it's old floppy disks. But you can see every six inches or so, I'm redistributing the bulk of this. We're at our last corner. Look at how smooth this goes, I swear. I am just, I'm in love with my machine every day and it's like, it's the first time we've met. Miter, here it is. Little flip and flop on it. I'm turning it around. I'm lowering the foot now. Here we go. Now. I am gonna stitch a little bit, but I'm gonna leave a gap where I'm connecting my binding ends together. Because I want room to work. You gotta have room to spread out. So I'm gonna probably go another foot or so here. I'm going to back stitch, stop, and cut. All right, it's time to join our pieces together. And honestly, I have probably what you're looking at here is about 12 inches of empty space. So I'm going to take this about right here in the middle, and I'm going to open up my binding, and I'm going to fold it, making a miter. Now, if you need to, you can go to your iron and press this crease into place. I'm just gonna give it a little finger pressing. Remember that marker that we used earlier? Once you make your crease, you can draw your line in. And so there's my mitered line that I made. Now I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna line it up here. And the idea is that we're gonna put right, we're gonna keep this folded down like this. We're gonna take this piece because we wanna put right sides together. So this lines up here, that stays there. I'm gonna put my, my pins in make everything happy and fantastic. All right. So the next step is just to sew down this line that I've drawn. And I'm going to do that with my uh, standard sewing foot. It's just a little easier than trying to do that with the 71 foot. Be careful to remove the pins before you get to them.
I'm just going to trim. Once again, cutting my little dog ears off. I'm going to press my seam open. And now open up my quilt, let it fold back in on itself and secure it using my 71 foot again. Now that we're at where we started, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. I'm going to turn my quilt around and we're going to use that little flat fell piece right there to hold our binding piece in place. So I'm going to roll my fabric over, lower my foot, and get my needle down into the material. I'm going to trim some of my extra threads here. And all I'm doing is, I'm just starting sewing, but I'm gonna move my needle position over a couple of clicks. And now I'm gonna lift my presser foot up and put my little flop over. Now, for those of you that are using a machine with foot recognition, the machine does not like it. If you tell it you have a 71 foot on, it won't let you move the needle position, at least on the 880. So just tell it that you have a regular one foot non-coated version, and then you'll be able to. So now this foot, this little metal piece, is gonna hold this into place just like so, and I'm just gonna stitch. And I actually like to elongate my stitch to about three millimeters. This is a very boring experience until you get to the corners. I do enjoy mitering the corners with this foot. You guys hear zombie noises that's camilla it's that it's her witching hour it's about five o'clock or so she turns into a crazy monster So here I am getting close to the edge. Now, I don't use that little floppy doodle all the way to the end, so I'm gonna release it using my freehand system. And now I'm gonna sew right up to the very, very edge, reverse, cut, and now I'm gonna turn it around And look, look at that perfect miter that we can create right there. And I'm gonna start it by just putting it under the machine like so, lowering my foot and just getting a few stitches forward and backwards. And now I'm gonna slip my flap into place. And now I'm gonna stitch. And now I'll do that at each corner. Some of you might recognize this quilt. 
It's from our tutorial for Anita's Arrowhead that was made with the layer cakes from the um, Cotton and Steel collection. This isn't available anymore. This is from the Gale personal stash from many moons ago. But the binding fabric we still have here because that is Krista Watson. Just adjusting a little bit as I wiggle this material around. Now she's squeaking things, everybody. Now, here I am again. Remember, I'm not going to keep it under the little metal piece all the way. I'm going to go a little bit, back up, cut. And then turn around. Once again, it makes a beautiful miter that is in perfect position here. Just gonna line it up under here. Just go a few little stitches more, then I can take my fabric and pull it over there. and line this up into place. All right, I'm just finishing up the last bit. I've slipped my material out from under my little piece and I get back to where I start. I over sew a little bit and now I just can't wait to show you this finished quilt because it is so cute. Oh, this quilt, it was so much fun to make. Once again, if you wanna see how I did this pattern, it's in our Anita's Arrowhead tutorial. But, you know, it took me almost a year to get a binding on it, which is typical. But now that I know this trick of using the number 71 foot, it's easy peasy. And you know what? I don't know if I'm going to curl up with this quilt this evening, because if you can believe it, we are having 70 degree weather here in Chicago in November. Ah, oh, okay. Make sure everybody knows this was filmed in 2020. <laughs> anyway, if you want to see more videos just like this one, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And please don't forget to like, we like to be liked, comment, we love to chat with you, and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to be the first to know when we upload a new video, just click the little bell. But in the meantime, go outside. It's glorious out there and make something awesome.